What's up, everybody? Welcome back to part three of our Crushing Bet Safe series here on Poker VIP. My name is Spraggy, same as it has been for all the other parts. I'm glad you can join us again as we venture into the 20 euro streets here on Bet Safe. This is exactly the same table duplicated twice, and that just won't do. This is the table uh, we need to see. We actually have some heads up action going on at the moment against a regular player, Sex Machine 7, who uh, viewers of part two will be familiar with. If you haven't seen part two yet, you can head back and watch parts two and one uh, immediately, but it's not entirely necessary. You can pick up the action here if you wish. We are going to bet the turn with the king three. Uh, once uh, Sex Machine checks back the flop, we are going to look for a value bet one in the very least. I think probably two. Don't think there's going to be too many draws that we can bluff catch against at the river um, since hands like Jack-10 and Spades would bet the flop. So we're just going to go for value from um, Queen X. I don't think the river's too much of a worry. 6-7 uh, gets there. 8-9 he probably doesn't call turn with. I think we are going to go for a value bet. Somewhat thin. Like I said, I don't think he has spades too often. Um, so we'll just go for a value bet from some Queen X. People who aren't used to playing heads up tend to um, over adjust heads up and call a few too many um, rivers. Or call a little bit too much in general. Or not believe you in general. So I think betting here for value is going to be fine. Given what we know about his range. But he ends up finding a fold. Hopefully we don't have to play heads up for too long. But, um, oh, in fact we don't have to play heads up at all. So we're going to have to find another game to fill this void. Let's see what else we got running here on BetSafe. Okay, deal me in. We found one. Let me just bring it in for you guys. Sorry about that. But uh, it looks like Sex Machine is not a heads-up machine. Okay. We've got to get rid of our duplicate here. And we're back in the game. Unfortunately, on I still haven't found out on BetSafe, it auto-posts my blind. So we now have 20 cents, uh, which is going to kill our win rate here with this 20 cents going in. Abandoned with the 5-3 off. Nothing we can do. And our friend Sex Machine is going to uh, ISO. Obviously, we just have to get out of the way. Unfortunate. Um, I will untick auto post. Actually, we want auto post blind. I don't want to have to click post small and big blind. But it's a shame that it, uh, it auto posts when we sit down. Right hand side, win or die opens. We're going to defend in position with the queen nine offsuit. And uh, we're going to check back here, I think. We have reasonable amounts of showdown value against a small blind opening range. The only thing is, like, a lot of his air is just going to stab. So when he checks, I'm going to put him on some ace highs. I'd imagine he has ace high quite a lot of the time. Um, not necessarily convinced he'll fold it, though. So with queen high, we're probably okay to take a showdown. If we had something like 6-7 suited, we'd probably bet flop and turn. Um, you can probably bluff pretty wide when he ch once he checks. But uh, I guess we just we just f uh, check behind there. He's not going to fold ace highs, which, like I say, he's going to have the vast majority of the time. We get joined on our right player by a player called Scoot, who's in for 8 euros, so hopefully a decent value spot. Um, he's playing on this table as well, actually. That doesn't necessarily mean he's a reg. He can certainly be a, a fun player just playing a couple tables with 8 euros on each. We'll see how that develops. Ace-King um, offsuit is a little bit marginal to 3-bet versus none that are going to open here. Um... People, like I say, tend to play pretty tight pre-flop um, in most microstakes games. Um, I think that J-Man as well is a fish, so there's a little bit of value in flatting, I think, letting him come into the pot, making some strong top pairs. So we're just going to keep Sex Machine's range a little bit wider and elect a call rather than 3-bet. If I had Ace-King suit, I think I 3-bet. Ace-King off, I think I'm a little bit happy defending. We could certainly find a float on the flop as well with a gut shot and two overs. I think this is going to be fine. So we will call. Not too worried about that J-man behind too often. Like I say, his range pre-flop is going to be really wide, so he's going to miss this board quite uh, quite often. He does come along, though, which uh, will signal our end in the pot. We won't be continuing on this board, on this turn, rather. But we're certainly going to find a value bet now once we river a king. Sex Machine can have hands like King-Queen. Um, he can even have 
I guess he can still have King Jack. He can have pocket tens. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to get a call there. More interested in trying to get value from Dat J-Man now, who can call the river pretty wide. So we're going to go small because our primary value target is going to be this guy, who we think can still call with something like Ace Five, probably. Um, so we'll just go super small. We get a fold. And unfortunately, we get a fold from Sex Machine. Six eight off is certainly close. Probably going to go with the open just because of that day, that J man in the small blind who I think is going to call a lot, and um, we can play properly in position against him. But uh, he moves out of the way. Obviously, if we see a three bet, we're done. Flop seems good. We are going to put in a C bet. Our range would want to bet a little bit bigger on this board um, just because we'd want to protect a lot of our value hands uh, on this texture. So we'll bet a little bit bigger. And unfortunately, we get a fold. But we do get the 8 6 off pot hunter achievement. So not all is lost. Right hand side, 3 2 suited is probably just going to be a fold. A little bit too weak, I think, to call out a position. 2 A 3 X open. We'll definitely defend it for min, though. We are going to roll with another 30 minutes here for part three. Um, hopefully we can find some interesting spots as ever, but um, that's not always going to be the case in what is a few hundred hands, or not even sure we'll get a few hundred hands in, probably a hundred hand sample in the 30 minutes playing two tables. Um, so it's it's more the, the little stuff, the concepts that we're talking about that are going to be um, the most important. We will go with a raise with a jack nine offsuit on the button. Not seen much from Scoot. He just sat out on this table. Maybe he's uh, done with his session. We'll see if he sticks around here. Um, I don't think, other than, I guess that J-Man is a recreational, but it sucks having him here. It's harder for us to get into too many pots in position against him, obviously. Um, so hopefully we get this spot filled by another fun player. We'll see. We'll see what BetSafe has in store for us. That J man picking up a pot is always going to be uh, always going to be better for us. The more money that the the bad players have, the better. So always rooting for our recreational guys to do well against the regulars, of course. And win or die, who is definitely a regular, um, sits in on table one. Win the game or die trying. That's certainly a pretty aggressive stance to take to a twenty euro poker game, but I admire the dedication. So table one now has really become a battle to try and get that J-Man's um, nearly 100 big blinds. And it's, we're probably in the toughest situation to do it, like I say, given our position. Um, although this min 3-bet is promising. I'd assume this guy was a reg, but that min 3-bet sizing is either a misclick or this guy's not particularly thinking um, in very beneficial ways for himself is a nice way of putting it. So we'll definitely keep an eye on him. We're going to give him the, uh, I think we'll, I operate on a traffic light system. So like red is, like we know this guy's a reg. Actually, I know Telex 6 is a reg as well. I've seen him around a lot. Um, so someone we suspect of being a regular, um, we'd go orange, I guess. Um, and then red to confirm. This guy's yellow at the moment because we suspect him of moving towards the um, bad player category, which is green, as in green for go. You see what, you see what I've done with the traffic lights? It's quite a useful system. Of course, the most important thing, because um, just labeling up as a recreational player is not necessarily going to help us too much. Obviously, we know we want to be playing some more pots with him, and, or he's going to have things that we can exploit. But it's important to have notes, because some bad players, they play way too tight, and they fold way too much. Um, some recreational players never fold anything, play way too many hands, etc. So we need to know what sort of bad player he is. But good start, just a quick glance, knowing that you know this guy's probably not very good, um, and then going from there in you know actual notes or if you're using a hud which uh, i'm not on this site but if you're using a hud then obviously you have more information in your statistics still got an empty seat on table uh two here that we're hoping fills up uh we're not going to open seven three of diamonds 
like I say, uh, or like I said rather in part two for those of you who've watched it, um, we would want in general to be hunting around the lobby trying to find better games, but just for the sake of keeping the action flowy, we will stick with these ones that we have for the uh, purposes of the video. Not much fun watching me root around a lobby. Jack 7 off is going to be too wide to open from the cutoff, so we'll fold. And Jack 8 off. Um, it's probably going to be a raise of blind v blind, but other than that, we're not too interested in playing. Looks like Scoot is sticking around, even though he left table 1. Maybe 2 was too much for him. Fold here with this uh, Jack 8 off out of position, but going to go with the open to 3x with 7, 8 suited. So this is the problem about being in this position um, with J-Man to our direct left is we want to play pots ideally in position against the recreational player. Now, when he's to our direct left, the majority of pots against him, um, we're going to be out of position. So we would we would really want him where Telek is sitting. It's going to be a lot easier for us to play. Um, but that's uh, this is where we find ourselves. Betting the flop here is going to be fine. I think his range pre-flop is going to be pretty wide, I would imagine. Recreationals tend, in general, to want to play a lot of hands. Um, so I'm fine to see betting here with backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight draw on a pretty hard board to connect with. If he has something like jack-10 of green cards, then he's probably just giving up. Um, I think we will bet again. He's probably capable of even calling something like pocket fours on the flop. Um, so just getting a fold from stuff like that is reasonable. We've got to be a little bit careful because um, recreational players also love playing aces. So he's probably as wide as like ace two, three, four, five here. Um, I think we're probably going to fold the uh, fold to this turn raise. I'm going to assume he has an ace the vast majority of the time. We've got uh, nine outs, not a lot of not all of which are going to be clean. Like he can definitely boat up and also. If we river, say, the four of spades, um, he's not always going to pay us off. I mean, I guess with an ace, he is a vast majority of the time. But uh, it kind of sucks for us to have to call out a position here, especially with only 10 euros behind. We don't have great implied odds either, so I'm actually just going to fold. But um, I don't mind the double barrel. I think it's, it's reasonable uh, when we pick up equity, of course. We'd probably barrel a spade... I'm sure we'd barrel a six just because, uh, yeah, we probably should barrel a six. Like I say, he can float some underpairs, he can float some king highs. So I think barreling a six would be fine and then barreling a ten. But other than that, we're just shutting down with our hand on the turn. It's very much a one and done, get him to fold, you know. Um, like I say, if he's got stuff like eight, nine, nine, ten. What was the flop? It was actually it was ace, nine, ace, nine, ace. So things like queen, jack, jack, ten, um, jack, eight suited, um, pocket fours, threes, twos, fives. Sixes, sevens, stuff like that. We're going to defend ace nine of clubs in the big blind. We don't flop particularly well. Most likely just folding here. Um, kind of hard to find too many hands that open mid position to see about this flop that we get to fold. Maybe we get a fold out of ace ten. Ace queen if he chooses to see bet. But um, we're certainly getting called by Queen 10 suiteds and obviously King Jack, King Queen, Ace King, Pocket Kings, Queens, Jacks, all sticking around, Aces all sticking around, Pocket Twos, we've spoken, I think I mentioned that. But uh, either way, probably not a very good spot for us to check raise, even with the backdoor club, so we'll just give up here. I think we'll just fold the king nine offsuit here. Very, very easily dominated. Pretty crummy hand uh, to play versus an undergun open. And I don't feel like we should three bet here. We don't want to three bet too many hands versus undergun for value. So we don't need too many bluffs. And king nine off would definitely be over bluffing if we were to go with it. Obviously, a dry king high board would have been pretty decent for our hand. But once, if we're just uh, hypothetically, if we're three handed here and sex machine bets and then bets turn, our hand's pretty much toast all the time. Gonna open the jacks on the button, just staying with our standard min open. We get a call from that J man. And a fold. So this is a flop typically we would check behind against most rags. Uh, I think against J man we're probably gonna go for a bet. Uh, expect him to float a little bit wider than your average. So don't mind extending our value here with the jacks. But he just gives it up. Like I say, when, when people's preflop ranges are very wide, this is a mistake that some people make. Um, 
So probably worth mentioning, whilst we've got nothing going on, is... Um, they think because someone calls a lot pre-flop that they're going to call a lot post-flop. You think, oh, this guy's a loose player, so he's just going to keep calling and calling and calling. And that's obviously true to an extent, but what you'll also find is if someone's pre-flop range is very wide, then it's it's often hard for them to connect um, to too many flops because here we had the, what, queen nine, queen nine three two-tone, I believe. Um, just check this out. We're queen nine six two-tone. So a little bit more connected because things like seven eight and seven five make a gut shot. But, I mean, if he's got stuff like jack seven in his range or like king four in his range it's really hard for him to connect to too many boards and once you start getting into the really high v pippers like uh high voluntarily putting money in the pot players um so they're just playing a lot of hands pre-flop basically even though they're very very loose um pre-flop it's they're not always gonna that's not always gonna translate rather to being calling a lot post-flop just because so many of their hands aren't gonna connect with uh enough flops you know so don't always confuse a loose pre-flop player with a loose post-flop player. Just, you know, take everyone for what uh, for what they're worth. Just always be uh, keeping notes and seeing how people are playing. Assumptions based on no information is probably the worst thing we can do in poker. We have to make assumptions based on the limited information we have, but just plucking stuff out of the air kind of sucks for us. Pretty interesting spot here. Obviously, uh, oh, that's good for us, I think. That J-Man probably not messing around here too much. This is a really strong line that he's taken. Um, that river might scupper him a little bit. We'll see. He's only got five euros left. Um, but hopefully, uh, that J-Man wins the pot. That's what we're after. Uh, and apparently, he is messing around a lot more than we think. He's got ace-king with no diamond blockers and jams into the nut flush. So, uh, that J-Man is going to get a recreational note on him. And we're just going to put that he... Um, Min raised, five five four seven, di three diamond turn, with ace king no diamond, large zero equity bluff basically. I say zero equity, just had uh, no pair no draw, you know. Like if he makes that bluff with ace king with the ace of diamonds, much more reasonable. I hate his sizings, just because he leaves himself with five euros into twenty seven at the river. He's got no fold equity on the river, um, so he should probably just jam turn with his bluffs, but. Um, if he did that with something like Ace-King with the Ace of Diamonds, I wouldn't hate it, but Ace-King offsuit certainly is just going to be way too wild, crazy, and just shows that he's not really thinking about what he's doing. Unfortunately, that means that this table is likely or more likely to break since the recreational player is gone. Um, these guys are probably going to sh shuffle off into the night. So we're going to have to keep an eye on the lobby and see what else is running, I guess. Not too much running on BetSafe uh, in terms of games. Um... But as you can see with players like this and uh, one of the players we had in a, um, part two of this series, they're definitely a very decent amount of really, really um, willing to gamble fun players, shall we say, who don't really uh, stick around for too long. So uh, the games are good. It's just making sure we're in the correct on the correct tables rather. But we'll, as long as there's a table run in here, as long as there's a game run in here, we'll stick around. Um, like I say, we, we want action here for the video, so we'll we'll stick it out three-handed if they're willing to. This also helps as well, um, and this is something that really frustrates me, is um, especially on higher traffic sites, is if you have a game running where you have three empty seats, more often than not, a recreational player is going to join here really, really soon. Because recreational players don't join waiting lists. They don't like sitting on new tables. They want to find the tables where there's like three or four players already playing and they can jump into a game, right? So sure, playing three-handed with other regulars is not the most attractive proposition. But it's going to help start games so much quicker. And for the players that are willing to do it, you're way, way more likely to attract um, a bad player into the game. So for the sake of maybe 10, 20 hands playing three-handed... It's definitely worth it to try and keep the table going and, and hopefully attract some uh, loose money, shall we say. This is unfortunate for us. Pretty sure it's a 3x. Um, 3x open. For a min open, we would definitely be in the pot.
Jack five of diamonds most likely just gonna be a fold from the small blind. And Mr. Anderson joins us on table two. So we'll keep an eye on him, um, try and see how we think he's going to play. Haven't seen much from Scott at all so far. Uh, just hasn't got involved in any pots as far as I can tell. Obviously, he must have won one here for 55 cents, but nothing reasonable coming out of him. Seems a little bit tighter. This is where the commentator's curse, he does something crazy. Uh, maybe not. We're going to fold the king five and going to call with the ace nine off against sex machines button open. And we'll certainly be calling the flop. Obviously, our ace high uh, on its own is going to be the best hand here. A very, very decent amount of the time. We also have the ace of spades and a 9x, which has got a backdoor uh, straight draw. So we're definitely going to call. And we do turn top pair. Which, in a three-handed game here, uh, versus a button open, is going to be the best hand vast majority of the time. Our opponent can still be value betting worse here with 9-10. He can have bluffs with stuff like queen-jack. Um, so obviously a very, very profitable call for us on the turn. The real decision is going to come uh, at the river. We will check and then we will decide. So what do we know so far about Sex Machine? He's probably one of the more aggressive regulars. Um, we are shorthanded. He doesn't have too many sixes in his range, I don't think. Um... So he's really kind of repping kind of like pretty narrow. Four houses and things like Jack-10. Um, I'm probably going to end up calling against him. Just because his value range is pretty narrow. We block 8-9, we block pocket 9s. He can probably still value bet Ace-8, I guess. But he can barrel the turn with so many hands that I think we're probably going to have to look it up. So that's what we'll do. And like I say, he has a queen 10. So there's so many barrels on the turn. Things like queen 10, king 10. Uh, queen jack was what we originally suggested could be a good barrel on the turn. Uh, and then once you start adding in some spade combos, obviously we block the ace of spades, which isn't ideal because it cuts down on the number of flush combos he can have. But when you turn top pair in a spot like that, three-handed against one of the more aggressive regs, we probably just have to click call, uh, given the strength of our hand. And like I said, it's kind of difficult for him to have six uh, six x. It was a seven eight eight nine board, so I don't think six seven bets the turn. I think that would check call. Um, I guess something like queen six he could bet turn with. King six suited he could bet turn with. Nine six probably check calls. Eight six bets. I guess he can have some six x. Yeah, maybe it's still than I first thought. But uh, there are so many turn barrels as well. So it's going to be close, but I think calling reasonable. Very, very small three bet here. This might be a misclick. I think for the price, we're obliged to see a flop in position. Uh, versus win or die. Uh, this is not really what we're looking for. And our nine high has no showdown value or real good backdoor equity. So we're just going to give it up. Uh, we could definitely go for a three bet. Uh, I think we will fold in this instance. Ace full suit would definitely be a three bet. I don't know. Probably just three bet um, more for value from the small blind versus button. Since we're going to get called so much, we really want to want to depolarize and just start three betting stuff like king queen suited. Um, things are going to flop way better than ace four off suit. I like this is not a particularly uh, Good hand to enter three bet pots out of position with, and that's going to happen a lot when we three bet versus spun. So, just letting this go. I'm only positing, you know, just because uh, we're in a three handed game, so we got to be a little bit more aggressive. But uh, we'll fold. We shall fold. But Sex Machine didn't. He came in with a three bet, and even though we're not involved, always good to be. Keeping an eye on the table, see how your opponents are playing, see if you can take any reads or make any notes um, if the hand gets to showdown, or even if it doesn't in some instances. Table two, we are in a pot finally with Scoot, because we're going to defend the big blind versus his uh, small blind steal. 
and we flop the toppest pair with the bottomest. Someone ring Collins, get that one in the dictionary for me. Bottom with the bottomed kicker. Ace two. And like I said, we haven't really seen Scut go too crazy so far, so uh, not entirely happy if we get bet, bet, bet. Probably going to find a fold somewhere, but um, pretty content once he checks. We're going to check behind. I don't think we can get three streets, so we're just going to check our hand. Try and get some later value on later streets with our hand being a little bit uh, underrepped with a check. He checks again. We are going to value bet turn and river now. Just really small bets. His hand doesn't seem to be that strong, so we're going to have to uh, try and encourage him into the pot a little bit. And now, if we value bet, obviously this river is not fantastic, but I think we can still bet real small. Just go um, a third pot. Or a little. Let's go a third pot. Whoa. That's not a third pot. We're going to go a third pot, just get, try and get called by like King 9 here. Things like that. But he does give it up. Table one, obviously, we're going to open the ace and the eight. If we get three bet to the 80 cents, again, we call, but a, a, a normal uh, three bet sizing, we would fold ace eight offsuit here. Now, this is more normal. I think we will fold. Again, very easy dominated hand if we flop an ace or an eight. Um, we'd be looking for suited stuff, suited connectors, and, and stronger broadways than ace eight off. Very, very. Hand that doesn't flop very well, a lot of reverse implied odds, which means that if we hit an ace, we actually um, are going to get stacked uh, a lot more than we stack him. And we're going to get stacked by the ace queens, ace kings, ace jacks of this world. So folding seems good. Ace eight suited is close, probably a defend for the sizing. Folding the jack ten off out of position, and we'll go for a raise with seven eight offsuit here. Uh, we flop a 7. This is a board we really want to see bet almost always. Um, so I think we will bet real small with the 7 here. We should probably bet all our range really small on these paired boards. Just because we want to bet it almost all the time. Um, since it's a really hard board to connect with. Um, we would want to see bet a lot just to, in a blind v blind battle, just to fold out a lot of our opponent's range. I don't think we can go for multiple streets with the seven, but I do feel like for that 30 cent bet, he floated us insanely wide. So it's going to be a check call, check call most likely, especially against Sex Machine, who we've already seen is capable of three streets uh, bluffs with the queen 10 hand previously. So we'll go into the time bank here um, and end up calling. Uh, and like I say, against this player, we're certainly not going to be able to fold any rivers. If he shows me a queen, he shows me a queen. Uh, but... He chooses not to follow through, and we, we win the pot. We'll see what he floated the flop with. And it was jack-9 off on queen-queen-7. Queen so like I say, um, he's going to float really wide for that sizing. Um, if we don't pick up anything on the turn, we're probably firing again. Or if we have a hand like king-10, for example, we'd probably fire again on the turn. Um we just got to make sure that we're value betting enough on turns that we're not full of air. So we'd have to bet some of our stronger nines. Obviously, we're betting our queens um, and most of our pocket pairs. Uh, all of our pocket pairs higher than that, probably. It's kind of one of those spots where it's, it's really easy to be full of bluffs. But it doesn't really matter because not a lot of people adjust well. Um, like, they don't call down. A lot of people will fold ace high to a second barrel, for example, which... Uh, it's going to be hugely profitable for us if, if we just keep betting those sort of boards. But we've just got to make sure we have a decent amount of value bets. As, because eventually people will start calling us down light if we keep getting caught out. Uh, we will we will call the Jack Six suited. Looks like we're playing heads up again. Uh, if you guys were here for part two, Sex Machine didn't want to play heads up with us. He ended up sitting out. So this table might end up breaking, but um, that's fine. It looks like we're about to hit our 30 minutes for the video anyway. We've had some fun hands with the Ace-9 cooldown um, and some interesting concept discussion as ever. Comments, questions, queries, fire them in to me on YouTube or on Poker VIP website, and I will get back to you. Um, we will see out... I guess we just entered a new orbit here, which is fine. We're just going to play, um, always play our free hands, and um, we'll keep going against Sex Machine for uh, as long as he would want to.
but like I say, not a, not an explosive session by any means. There's not been any uh, hugely interesting, massive all-in pots, but hopefully we've picked up a trick or two. Don't think I want to see about this tex texture. Uh, we're just going to fold actually. It's just a board he can continue with so much on. Um, no, we'll post a small blind. That's fine. Like I said, we want to we want to maximize our value. So when we've already paid the big blind, um, we pay the small blind and then we just play our other three free hands or whatever, just to get our free hands in. We get three bet by sex machine on the left hand side. I think this is a completely reasonable call in position. So that is what we'll do. Would love to see a heart out here. Makes our float a lot more attractive, but I th I still think we're probably going to end up calling. Um, against him. So this is one of those spots where we spoke about people folding a side to a second barrel, um, which in single raise pots might be a bit of a problem, but in a three bet pot, we already know this guy doesn't want to play heads up against me because he sat out in part two of this series. So he's probably going to play a little bit tighter. Um, probably going to play a little bit tighter heads up. If I had a hand like ace four of diamonds, or if I had a hand like king four of diamonds, it might be an intriguing position to raise. Because uh, we block four five, and we probably have more threes in our range than our opponent. But um, we're just going to fold to this sizing's pretty pretty big, and uh, we don't have any reasonable backdoor. Like I said, if we had hearts on the flop, or if this was ace four of diamonds, we might consider a raise, or definitely a call, or a raise. But uh, we're just folding now. We might even be able to... Nah, we probably can't fold such a dry flop. He's going to see about everything. Twos, we will defend. But most likely just folding on the the um, queen 8-8. Eight, eight. We'd much rather the float our ace highs here just because twos is very, very difficult to improve with. We have two outs and every other turn we just have to give up. So much m much more likely to defend overs here or gut shots, things like, things of that nature. And he's done. He doesn't. He doesn't want to play heads up. He feigned interest, but uh, I think we're going to be done on table one. So we'll just see out these last. Uh, we're going to get another two hands here on table two. Interesting story. Uh, for those of you who didn't watch part two, you won't know. But uh, I recorded parts, um, parts two, three, and four of this series, and accidentally outputted them in really terrible quality that was just not suitable for human consumption. So I'm. This is my second time. Second time round making. Parts two, three, and four, but like I said, I don't mind. It's uh, it's all good on my end. But um, in one of those videos, I did exactly this. I was playing my free hands, and it was the final last hand of the video, and I got it in with pocket tens uh, versus ace queen against a real. It was a huge, huge fish, and I got it in with pocket tens versus his ace queen, and the regular behind him had kings, and we got stacked on the very, very last hand. Um, so I'm kind of glad that that got wiped from the memory, if you will. Hopefully. Nothing similar is going to happen here. In fact, this is going to be our last hand because this guy's left. So um, it will go... Uh, we'll see. Maybe this guy posts a small blind. Look at me eking out the value. Got to be done, though. Oh, no, he's gone. So uh, this is going to be our last hand. Uh, as ever, folks, thank you very much for watching um, part three. We will be back very soon for part four. Hope you're enjoying these videos. Uh, if you are, do let me know. If you have any co uh, questions, comments, criticisms, whatever, just... Um, don't be afraid to get involved in the comments. Until next time, I'll see you down the road.